Welcome to episode 26 of The Grocery Guru. We're here with Andrew Grant. Andrew, how are you? Good morning. Very good, thank you, Darren. Cool, and I think we're continuing our series of looking at results. So we've looked at Morrison's previously, we've looked at Tesco, it's our now, now our friends at Hobo. Uh, yeah, you were going to say Stamford Street. And I was. Rage, <laughs> I <Yeah>. was. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, getting towards the end of results season, um, I suppose, you know, those things with results, you, you've read them. Um, more of the same, really, that we saw with um, Tesco and Morrison's. Everybody, all the supermarkets, all the food grocers, doing incredibly well out of COVID, but, um, but at a cost. And that's true. So we're looking at the preliminary results for the 52 weeks ended 6th of March 21. And what was the biggest highlight for you, the COVID cost? Uh, no, I, I, I think you're going to touch on that in a second. But the, um, uh, for me, it's, you know, uh, online. We talked about it in several of these episodes. But their you know, online, online sales have doubled from 8% of their business to 17% of yep. the business. Uh, most importantly, um, they're now saying that they're profitable online sales so what the pandemic seems to have done is got all of them over that base cost line of you know running trucks and having to pick stuff in stores you got a lot of fixed cost there yeah. they didn't have the volume before to make it profitable yeah. all of a sudden it's kicked their online or their home delivery operations into profit which is uh, good news for i guess you know the shareholders going forward that makes sense. So we're saying now that one in five customers are ordering online. They've made yeah. managed to make it profitable. So they've got over that hump, whatever that was, 10%, 15%. Okay. All right. The, the one I do want to raise is the COVID cost because it's still <laughs> amazing me. So these guys are saying, I'll just read it out, um, offset by £485 million worth of direct COVID-19 costs. Yeah. I mean, their profits are down 39% on the back of that. Wow. Um, yeah, a, I mean, a huge, huge hit. And, you know, just just have a look at the amount of Perspex in store and the amount of stickers saying two metres apart and the, um, you know, the number of extra security guards. Um, I know I know when we were shopping during the first lockdown, Sainsbury's were the toughest on the rules. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I can remember going in with my other half and being told to stand apart from your own wife in a Sainsbury's. <laughs> I thought it was slightly over the top at the time. <laughs> um, in our local Tain store, which is which is quite small, there's a big queue at the front of the store. Um, but what people have realised is you queue at the front of the store, but actually you can go in the back and there's no one there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, huge, huge extra costs. Quite, I don't know, maybe it's the cynical side of me, but if I was the finance director, I think I'd be throwing everything at one-off COVID costs to... Maybe mask some underperformance elsewhere, but I didn't say that. No, no, and I certainly won't repeat it. Um, so we've got a statutory loss for Sainsbury's before tax of 261 million. Statutory loss. Wow. Yeah, a lot of exceptionals in there. I mean, their, their operating profit, as I said, was hit by that COVID. So, you know, un underlying, that, you know, they're doing incredibly well. And, and the other thing, actually, if anybody that follows Sainsbury's history or being involved in Sainsbury's history is a, a bit like all the other UK supermarkets. They've got a terrible history of acquisitions. Yes. Uh, home base. I mean, they they home base hobbled them for years and years, and they never really did anything with it. Um, they do seem to be making a good fist of Argos. Well, that's so, really true. Uh, and I remember a conference I was at with Sir Peter Davis, who ran Sainsbury's in probably the late 90s, I think it was. And he stood up on stage talking about acquisitions and he said, I know the answer's Egypt, but what the hell was the question? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they, yes, they did buy a store in Egypt, didn't they? Whatever. But um, no, again, I think they just, you know, finally they seemed timing seemed to be perfectly working for them you know to take to take on argos just before home deliveries go ballistic because of a technology and b obviously covid accelerating it you know great move moving argos into sainsbury stores so that you click and collect you know um massively extended opening hours for argos at no real cost to them because the supermarket's open anyway really convenient for customers 
um, and Argos, you know, a pretty good high street, you know, well-respected brand name. So, yeah, they seem to be, you know, um, doing lots of good things. Um, I know you chuckled at their new ready meals range, as did I. Maybe yeah. some of their choice of branding could be improved. Yeah, so I'm just going to flip to that because I think we've got, so we've got the Stamford Street ready meals. Now I've got a fondness with Stamford Street. We're putting that aside. I get what we're doing. We've got Mary Ann's yogurts and we've got the imperfectly tasty range. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. We can see what they're doing. Um, Tess, we obviously did, uh, were first out of the uh, box on doing this type of thing. They're doing it. Maybe it'll work for them too. Yeah, it should do, should do. And then, you know, so all in all, you know, Morrison's, Tesco, Sainsbury's, uh, you won't really see Asda's figures, um, you know, but they'll have done equally well. So, you know, the pandemic has been good for the supermarkets um, and, you know, they're continuing to rock and roll. Um, I guess one final thing, um, again, while we're on the subject of, of Sainsbury's, is what their ex-boss, Justin King's been up to. I don't know if you picked yeah. it up. Well, I noticed something on LinkedIn. I saw a picture of him and then it was a headline, but it went past me. I think you've read it. What, what was he doing? Yeah, no, he's jumping on this. Um, you know, we talked back in one of the episodes about 10 minute delivery windows. And I think you were quite shocked. I think you thought it was 10 minutes to place the order. Now, 10 minutes to get your order. Um, so no, Justin has invested in Snappy Shopper, um, which it, as I read it, is sort of a, um, a middleman between a C store and a customer. So if you're an independent C store, you haven't got the clout and the investment of a Tesco or a Sainsbury's yep. to do your own home deliveries. Yep. <clears throat> um, but just as just eat in the restaurant sector, you know, if you're a small Chinese or Indian takeaway or you know, whichever cuisine, um, just eat will pick up the order and deliver it and do all the fulfillment IT clever stuff. It's exactly what Snappy Shopper does. So if you're an independent C store, your customers can order online through the Snappy Shopper app. Yep. And you get your delivery and it costs either the customer or the shopper, I think three quid commission. Okay. So, so if, I, if I want to order two pints of milk, some bacon and some eggs for breakfast uh, later this morning, then I just do that for three pounds. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if that's all you order, um, it's going to be a high, a, a high um, uh, on cost. But yeah, but I guess given that, you know, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Asda's home deliveries are everywhere. Yeah. What's the need to get it from your local C store? If I, mean, I want home delivery, if I want home delivery, my first thought would be one of those big three or four. Yeah. Would I think about my little local C store? I, I don't know. Obviously, you know, a lot of them have different ranges, more local produce, possibly fresher, maybe. Could but Justin obviously, Justin obviously thinks it's worth investing and in. he's put quite a shed load of money into it, his own money, supposedly. So, um, well, maybe we if, it's, it. if it was a speciality Polish store, Polish convenience store. Yeah, maybe. actually. That yeah, as I said, I mean, you, where it wins. But there's all, you know, um, I know around, you know, there's, there's farm shops with all their own local produce. Maybe they can take, you know, that would be of interest to people. And as you say, a, you know, specialist um, Polish or Eastern European supermarkets, of which there are lots, um, now suddenly have the ability to offer home deliveries. Interesting, interesting. Let me just share a couple of highlights I noticed. I'll read out this statement. We are changing the pace, making bold decisions. I thought that was an odd thing to put in. You know, it's it obvious, aren't they? Always moving at pace and always trying to make bold decisions. Why, why tell us that in their statement? It's annual report speak, isn't it? You've got to say that. You can't, you can't say the opposite. We're slowing down and, and not doing anything. <laughs> no, I just thought it, it was such an obvious thing to put in. Aren't we always moving at pace? Aren't we always trying yeah, to make bold but, decisions? But also, you know, every single annual report starts with, I want to heartily thank my staff and colleagues and everybody. You know, it's, it's, it's just what you expect in a, you know, in, a, in an annual report statement. Okay, all right. Well, let me uh, just highlight this one to you. Changing our ways of working and our supplier relationships will triple our levels of new product innovation to 1,900 products in the year ahead. Now, what does yeah. that mean for Sainsbury's and the supplier that their innovation is going through the roof? 
Well, I think that is them finally saying we're going to take MS on and MS and Waitrose on on their top game. I think Sainsbury's biggest, you know, people like Tesco and Asda, their biggest issue is leaking shoppers to Aldi and Lidl. Uh, that will affect Sainsbury's shoppers, but I think Sainsbury's have to look over their shoulder at Waitrose and M&S much more maybe than the others. Yeah. And of course, what M&S in particular are known for is their food innovation. It's just, you know, phenomenal food innovation. And I think Sainsbury's, uh, you know, are now saying, right, we're going to take them on 1,900 new products a year. Sounds like with all those sort of sub-brands you've just mentioned, you know, there's some interesting stuff there. So maybe for suppliers that are watching, the door's a bit more open for innovation than it was before? Possibly. I mean, you know, Sainsbury's have had a good record with their, you know, their um, new supplier academy. I forget what the name of it is, the, the hot house for yeah. <clears throat> suppliers. I've had very good reports of that from people that we've dealt with. Um, but it sounds like they're ramping it up even more. It'll be interesting to see. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, last couple of highlights. Uh, delivered over 12 million online orders for elderly and vulnerable customers. Fantastic. Okay, 12 million. And the other one is 7.4 million digital Nectar users, up from 4.5 million last year. So another 3 million digital Nectar users. Yeah, and again, that, that links in with, you know, doubling of um, online business. Yeah, just like Tesco with Club Card their ability to data mine and understand their shoppers even more and target them with, you know, more Stamford Street kitchen food or whatever it is. Yeah, it just, just shows how, you know, as we have keep banging on about here, you know, Shopper Insight is, you know, the holy grail of 21st century retailing. It certainly is. And these guys are getting more and more data every day, in particular. With Absolutely. All right, Andrew, uh, before we end, your takeaway from all of this on the preliminary results for the 52 weeks ended 6th of March 21 by Sainsbury's. What's your takeaway? Um, I mean, yeah, really good performance. Um, yeah, I feel, so, I feel sorry for them having to lap that performance this year, as we talked about. But uh, every, every cloud and, and et cetera. Okay. Andrew, thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.